Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the James Brand Carter. Um, I'm gonna be linking this guy right down below for those of you who wanna check it out. Thank you so much to the gentleman who sent this in for review. That's this person right here, Wanted Garage on Instagram or the one and only on Reddit. Please give him a follow. It's because people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. It's also because of my generous patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy overall. Uh, coming in at six and uh, 6.6, .6, just a little over six and a half. Blade length, 2.75. Actual cutting edge is coming in at something like 2.7, <laughs> maybe, yeah, 2.65, something like that. You get the idea. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. Closer to the size of the Ontario Rat Model 2, just a little smaller. How about up against the uh, Spyderco PM2 and Para 3? You can see here, closer to the size of the Para 3, but Definitely smaller. I will point out though that the cutting edge is almost identical to the pair of three. So just different dimensions there. Last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and its little brother, the Mini Griptilian. Definitely close to the size of the Mini Grip. But once again, uh, it is smaller, absolutely. Though, uh, usable handle room is extremely similar uh, when you take into consideration where the actual, where you're supposed to put your hands on the Mini Grip, where it cuts off, it's pretty darn similar. Um, let's go ahead and do uh, a uh, carry profile, I guess, up against the uh, Spyderco Para 3. You can see here the scales are contoured. They are a little bit thicker, but they're contoured, which is something that I always say, you know, I'll take a little bit of excess thickness if I get that contoured feeling. I always think that's nice. How about length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3? You can see here, this is not going to be a diff difficult object to carry. It's not very tall. It's not very long. Uh, it's not ultra thick or anything like that. So there you go. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check on this guy. Get out my tools here. Where's that? The driver. There it is. Get out my tools real quick. Uh, pivot is going to be a T8. I did check this already, and I'll explain here in a sec. Uh, pivot is a T8. It is not free spinning, not to at least the pivot came out just fine. I was attempting to adjust the action. And then the screws back here, absolutely T6 for the pocket clip. This is a uh, the lock is similar to an axis lock, so you'll be dealing with, as far as I understand, Omega Springs on the inside there. Um, if you've taken apart a Benchmade, no big deal. If you've never taken apart a Benchmade, it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys, even though the hardware is minimal, that it's an easy knife to disassemble. Just keep that in mind. It really depends on your experience. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside here real quick. We have... My Carta, and then can, I don't know if you guys can actually see in there, there is a countersunk steel liner on both sides, which is nice. I always like to see that. Oh, it's really hard to see because of that, but you can see it in there, right? Uh, it's, I like to see that over just solid My Carta, so I appreciate that. How about weight on this guy? Weight coming in at a totally reasonable 2.79, 2.75 ounces. That's very close to an ounce an inch. So ratio uh, people, people who are big on ratios, you'll probably really like that. For me, uh, anything under three ounces is ultra lightweight. I really don't care too much about the ratios. This is gonna be an easy to carry object, um, both dimensionally and because of the weight. So I don't have a, really don't have a problem with any of that. All right. So, uh, we rushed through that so I get tired of that. So, so the James Brand uh, Company, you guys, uh, if you remember uh, me reviewing the Barnes, this knife is actually older than the Barnes. A lot of people have talked about it. It's already been reviewed on many other review channels. Um, uh, I just had not really experienced anything from the James Brand Company uh, until I heard about the Barnes because I really liked how it looked. If you don't know how that review ended, uh, I'm sorry, if you don't know how that review ended on my channel, you're certainly welcome to go watch it. It was basically, this is a nice knife. It's using premium materials. Uh, fit and finish is really good. It's an integral or integral, right? Titanium. Made by Riot. Great. Holy cow, it's 600 bucks. No. <laughs> um, that was a hard no from me. And I gave it credit where it was due, right? I, I pointed out fit and finish elements and materials. All great. For about 400 to 450 bucks, that knife made sense. 
But that knife was so ridiculously overpriced. It, it, it was just a no from me, absolutely. Um, if you have gone and checked out any of the James Brand stuff, if you've seen it on Instagram, if you've checked out their website, right? There's a certain uh, marketing error that you see there, and I'm not going to say that that doesn't exist anywhere else in the knife world. I mean, it absolutely does. I mean, every brand has their own style of marketing. Um, but uh, it, it, if, it feels like um, this, the sale of culture, right? I mean, it feels like we're, we're being marketed a very specific culture. And, you know, I can understand how that can be appealing. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like it's in the same type of idea zone or perimeter as like cold steel stuff, right? But it's just that they're, they're, they're catering to a different group of people, right? Now, there's a big difference between what cold steel delivers right, what they're saying they're going to deliver and what they actually deliver than, you know, the James Brand Company. What you're getting here is a very modern, stylish, sort of minimalist, sort of vintage look, you know. I mean, that that's definitely what you're getting here. You're getting something that is stylish, and I'll give it that. This is a good-looking knife, right? Got the micarta. That's certainly a popular thing right now, right? Got a, We got nice straight lines. We've got a nice, uh, you know, the blade looks good. And these come in a wide variety of different flavors, right? So if brown and black isn't your thing or, you know, whatever. They've got different colors of G10. They've got the coated blades, the uncoated blades, right? whole bunch of different stuff. I think um, there's a couple of different prices. We'll talk about that here in a sec. What we have here is a, an, a lock that operates a lot like the Benchmade Axis locks. They're not doing anything different here, right? But for those of you wanting to cry out, uh, copy, copy. Uh, no, the patent on the Axis lock and any variation of it, that, that ended a while ago. So as far as I understand, they're free to use this. It operates the same. Basically, engagement and disengagement, disengagement of the lock itself is fine. But the action is pretty subpar. I, I was trying to adjust this to get it to be smooth and easy to actuate and at the same time lock up solid, and it does not. Even with my centering trick, uh, which is basically a combination, uh, it's, it's a specific order of adjustments between the handle screws and the pivot. There's a few different things you can try there, um, and eventually you should be able to get it to lock out solid and um, operate smoothly. I can't quite get it to do that. Now, I'll admit, you know, just a teeny tiny little bit of, of side to side movement, not necessarily the end of the world. Like on my Ritter Hogue, sometimes I'll feel that and I'll go to adjust it. And I can get it back out on the Ritter Hogue, right? Um, and this knife is, <laughs> believe it or not, in the same ballpark for price. Almost exactly. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah. This is running on phosphor bronze washers. And, it, you know, it's reasonably smooth. It's just, if you want to get that real smooth action that you, you know, that a lot of us have, have experienced in some of these other uh, brands that have been doing it for a while, and you want it to be solid and you want it to be centered, probably not going to happen, at least not in my experience. The other thing that's really frustrating is that this uses one of those disc things. And here's the thing, you know, for just like a normal, like if you're just going to open it, right, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy, right? I'm having to use my wrist here because of the leverage that I'm getting and the, you know, it, but anyways, uh, you can just open it like that and that's fine. It's just, it's a little bit tight because I was trying to get rid of the blade play and no, the blade play is absolutely there. So it's really hard to do stuff like this, like flick it out. You can get it. I, I, I get it about 40% of the time. And, and when I do get it, I have to use some wrist, um, the reverse flick, which sounds stupid, right, to judge it on this because it's like no knife really needs to be reverse flicked open. But there's a bunch of different ways that I uh, judge the action, right? If the, de if the, the the mechanism, in this case, that it's not really a detent. It's just sort of the event horizon, how the lock engages with the tang. That's also responsible for create or allowing you to create that buildup that throws the blade, right? So this knife can be opened like this and then closed fairly easily which is really all you need to do to get your knife out and use it, right? But all that other stuff that we like, the stuff that almost all of us judge action off of, um, ease of manipulation, right? It's not really there. This this disc thing, while it works on some other designs a little bit better, it just doesn't work here. This just should have been a thumb stud. I think it would have made it a little bit better. But still, though, I've read the, you know, people 
do have blade play issues and lockup issues. You know, some people report some up and down blade play. This doesn't have any up and down. It's just left and right, which is frustrating, right? On a twenty to thirty dollar knife, eh, whatever, right? On this, <laughs> no, this should have this should have no uh, blade play. The uh, the presentation of this thing, you know, appears it, it just looks really high quality, and there are some, you know, fit and finish. Generally speaking, like the seating of the hardware and the scales and everything, it's good. The blade is is also good, you know, nicely knocked down. Uh, the edge plenty sharp, comes down to a pretty darn thin edge. I mean, this is a good EDC blade. Um, and the, the little disc thing is a little teeny tiny bit in the cutting path, but not much. You can definitely get up right behind the edge and you can get a full purchase on this guy. It feels good, right? Pocket clip also feels good. I like, actually their, their pocket clip is pretty cool. Um, you know, on the sculpted titanium ones that were on, that were present on the, uh, the barns, right? This whole area right here was just one big chunk. Do you see how they folded it back? It does work really well. I don't normally see that, but it does work really well in and out of the pocket. On the uh, the sculpted titanium ones that come on the uh, the barns, it's just all one big chunk of titanium at the end, right? But they've just folded this around. That's fine. It does not look like it's reversible because you're thinking, well, there's needs to be because it sinks into a slot right here, and you're like, there needs to be a slot on the other side if it's going to be reversible. That little piece of metal right there that you can see in between the pocket clip and the micarta um, that actually moves around. So when you pull this out, it moves over to the other side, and then you can just switch it. I was trying to figure out, you know, because I was looking at it and I was like, what? I was like, something that really bugged me when I did that is one of these screws is actually a Chicago end holding in the other side. So what happened is I put it in here and then I pushed the screw back in and it pushed that Chicago end out. And <laughs> I was trying to screw and get it. I was trying to get it to bite and it wouldn't bite. So I had to use, well, I don't even know where it went, but it was like a flat piece of metal. I had to stick in there to hold the Chicago screw down so that I could get, you know, there was enough tension that I could screw it in. Mild annoyance, but it was there, right? So I that whole thing should just be a thread, uh, but it's not. It's got the Chicago one. Not really that big of a deal, but kind of like why, you know? So that was my experience with that. Um, we've got a backspacer back here. I think this looks all right. I mean, honestly, the, the contrast to me looks pretty good. Um... You know, it's just, it's frustrating because there are elements here of like, oh, these guys know what they're doing. And then there's other things where it's like, what? You know, it just doesn't, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Like I said, centering, uh, not there and not something that I was able to adjust. You can see here, it's just kind of wiggling all over the place. And this is with the action kind of tight. So the tolerance is inside of the pivot, you know, right between the blade, uh, the countersunk scales and the washers, just not really all that great. What's the blade steel? Hmm. VG10. Now, VG10, you know, by itself is not, you know, bad. It's not like a universally bad steel. In fact, it'll work just fine. Uh, it used to be top dog, right? I mean, it used to be like, wow, VG10 years ago. Like, what? What was it when VG10 was a big deal? Seven or eight years ago? Um, and, uh, you know, even then, well, maybe, maybe not then, but... Now VG10, it's like, yeah, that's a decent, you know, fairly well-rounded uh, blade steel. Stainless, holds an edge for, eh, okay. Easy to sharpen though, reasonably tough, right? Got good attributes for an EDC steel. If you're gonna pay 60 to $70 maximum, how much is this knife? The least expensive version of this knife that I could find online is $140. And the version you're looking at right here is inexplicably $20 more, $160. That's how much the Ritter Hogue costs. The Ritter Hogue is one of the most legendary knives, <laughs> in my opinion, in existence. Very, very good fit and finish. Uh, you can get a large and small version of this, smaller version being more so the same size as this guy, uh, coming in relatively the same price, 140, 150, this bigger guy, 160. This is contoured and textured G10 M390. Wonderful action, beautiful, centered. I've had this forever, you guys know that, right? Uh, and it's made in the United States. <laughs> James Brand Company, um, no, no. And here's the thing, people like, they, they really don't have to listen to me. There are people who look at this stuff and go, that is definitely the style 
of object that I want to carry, right? I feel like, you know, my, my persona is being projected through this tool <laughs> in, a in a trivial way to everybody else, but in a meaningful way to me, right? And that's what, that's what's happening here. So it's stylish, right? Function is, meh. It'll cut stuff, right? But it, it's missing all of those elements that you should be getting at this price point. Do, does it have the potential to get? Oh yeah, it does. But what should have happened? I mean, obviously, like the you know, like the centering and the lockup and the action thing, like that needs to get taken care of. Um, obviously, they work with OEMs. Like this, this isn't like a specific OEM. Like the James, James is not, as far as I understand, a person. It's just the. It's like. The James brand. <laughs> it's what it is, right? Um, I don't know anything about it. It's just like I'm trying to figure out like who that is, and it's not, it's just it's just the James brand, right? It's just an it's just a thing, it's an entity. Um so uh yeah, the um, you know, the the like I said, little things like how the micarta looks, the seating of the hardware, and little I love like the pocket clip, the blade grind, and it's good looking. This is a nice looking knife. This definitely should have been a thumb stud. Right? But the steel, no. And so, you know, obviously this, they don't, nobody needs me to say this because people have already been saying this. So then they come out with the, um, the barns and it's like, here's the nice, here's the premium. You guys want premium materials? Here's the premium materials. M390, beautiful finish, beautiful texturing, integral, Riot, uh, OEM. So amazing, right? We're like, great, cool. How much? And they're like, that'll be $600. <laughs> No, come on, come on, uh-uh. I am interested in seeing, I don't, I don't I, I'm not interested in, in um, you know, just leveling, not on this channel, I'm not saying like this This channel is has that type of power. I'm, I'm not interested in just, you know, dismissing or canceling a company. I, I really don't like to do that. What I'd like to see is, hey, up your, uh, if you're gonna do stuff in this territory, up your quality game, like overall fit and finish, and give us a better steal. Right? Don't be like, oh, okay, 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 154 C. No, come on. You know, if you want to wow us, remember Ritter Hogue, US made, M390. It's largely the same idea here. This, this guy's just a little bigger, but again, they got a smaller one. Same idea, head and shoulders above this. You want to wow people, use 20 CV. Uh, and uh, then continue with the styling thing, right? This is cool. It does look cool. Action's got to be, action's got to be better. Lockup's got to be better. Um, centering's got to be better, right? As this thing sits, like just the way that it is right here, this is uh, this is kind of a meh 50 to 60 dollar knife, right? Uh, and even there, it's like I would be frustrated with the little fit and finish details. I mean, we've got uh, this, you know, we got we've got other companies making knives not in the United States with very similar materials, Civivi, CJRB, right? Kaiser. Uh, making stuff that's way better for way less money. <laughs> way, 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 way better. Kaiser's got uh, the Doman in, uh, like the large Doman in uh, VG10, and it's micarta, right? Running on washers. What do they want for that thing? I think the newer one, they switched to N690. Uh, there are way too many examples out there that just make this not in the right, not at the right price point. But again, I'm late to the game, right? Everybody's been saying this. I just wanted to experience it myself. And I'm like, yup, I, I totally understand why people, you know, arrive at this conclusion. It's pretty rare that I do like a super negative review. But again, the point here is not to like cancel the, I'm not trying to be like, don't ever do business. No, it's just, hey, James Rand Company, love the style. I think it is cool, right? I love your pocket clip. I think uh, the, the design of the knife is really neat. Um, I think they're definitely capable of making some cool stuff. But at least this part of the knife community, because most of the people, most of you guys watching my content are going to know, just like me, you're going to pick this up and go, <laughs> 150, 160? Absolutely not. <laughs> You know, so it's just, it's overpriced. It's massively overpriced. And I'm known for being somebody who's a little bit, you know, like lenient when it comes to pricing. A lot of times I'll be like, it's high, but yeah, okay. It's kind of on like the, uh, I can just barely choke it down. This is a hard no on the price. 
hard no on the on the price. It doesn't make any sense. Um, all that stuff needs to be fixed. Better, I mean, we people know that these are not made in the United States. I mean, we, people know that, so it just needs to. I, I I would like to see something reasonable with better materials, better fit and finish come out. And at that point, I'll be happy to say, yeah, you know that that this looks great. Um, but uh, this is a no from me. <laughs> Um, I think that's, <laughs> I've been repeating myself over and over again. I do very much appreciate uh, Wanted Garage on Instagram sending this in because I wouldn't have been able to handle this and give my thoughts if he hadn't done that. If you already own this knife and you love it, obviously you don't, nobody needs to take what I'm saying, right, as absolute law. If you own this knife and you love it, that's really all that matters, right, if you're happy with it. Um, so you can just go on being happy and you can ignore all this. For the rest of you who have been looking at it and considering it, you have a bajillion other options that are better. Um, so I would recommend choosing any of those. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it today. I hope that you, um, got the information that you wanted here. I hope that you, uh, were at least mildly entertained. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.